In this video, we're gonna talk about soldering. So I've been asked many times by a lot of people about soldering different things, soldering wires together, soldering wires to PCBs like the LED strips or things like that that we're dealing with on a regular basis here at Next Level Neo. So I wanted to do a video to go over that with you guys. So first off is the tools. You gotta have the right tools or it's gonna make this very difficult. Uh, one of the big things is the actual solder that you are using. I really like this stuff here. It's by Kester, and I will have a link in the description for this exact stuff that I use, and it works very well. And this has rosin inside of it, and that really helps to make the solder stick to the pads. If you are not using something with rosin in it, then you'll have to use some kind of a rosin flux paste to adhere to the pads. I'm not gonna go into that because I don't use this stuff. I have it, but I don't use it. But this is the stuff I use, and I use leaded. Generally, a 60-40 solder resin ratio it's basically the lead the amount of lead that's in there works really well and this is the stuff like i said that i use you can get it different different sizes different gauges different grade on the wiring itself this one is a 0.8 millimeter size of solder and it like i said does work very well so uh, that's a big one if you're using lead free or something without rosin in it you're not going to enjoy the process. It is very difficult without those things. The only thing is it is leaded, so you wouldn't wash your hands. You probably don't want to be eating while you're soldering, uh, and you're going to want to just keep that in mind, that it is lead-based. But it's not going to kill you. It's not The fumes aren't lead. If you are concerned, you can get an exhaust fan, which will suck the fumes away from you. I wouldn't be you know, intentionally breathing them in, but you know, a little bit of it, it's not going to create an issue. Next is going to be uh, this wire cutters. Now, sometimes these are referred to as dikes, and these go really well to cut the rigid strips. So I get a lot of questions about the rigid strips, how to cut them, what is the best way to cut them. And these right here work very, very well. And I will have a, a link in the description for this style of cutters, uh, probably a cheaper one, as well as this style here, which is the Channel Lock brand. I've been using these exact same pair of cutters for like three years now and they're still cutting just as good as the day i bought them up next would be a set of strippers now i do like these because they work very well i can just take a, a piece of wire like this put it inside of strippers just like that and i push a button and it has effectively stripped the wiring right off. The only downside to these is if you use them as much as I do, expect to buy a new pair every year. The springs on these will break. In fact, a matter of fact, I've already broken the front spring and the back spring is only going to last so long before it breaks. Those are the three basic tools that you're going to have. Now, something else you can look into is something like the solder m8 pro and this is really cool because it's got little clamps so it's good for holding things in place if you're trying to solder a few things together or you, that strip just keeps trying to curl up on you and, and and roll away from you while you're trying to work this works really well to hold it in place so i'll have a just link in the description for all of these things to help you out the most important tool is the soldering iron. So I am currently using a Sugon A9 or a Kasi A9. Now they're both pretty much the same thing. Uh, the Kasi I came across last Christmas and they were running a really good deal on it and it looked identical to the Sugon so I figured I'd go ahead and buy one. I've been using the Sugon for about two years now. The Sugon has worked great. I have not even had to change a tip on them. It came with three different style tips, like a broad tip, a, a narrow tip, and then like an angled tip. And I have not had to buy another tip. Now I have other tips just in case, but I haven't had to use them. These tips have held up really well. The iron has held up really well. It still works great. There's different versions of the A9. There is the 210 and the 245. And the 245 is thicker than the 210. So I've got two of the soldering iron tips here, as you can see. And as you can see on the overhead there, it is quite a different size of tip. It's the same iron. It's the same wattage, about 120 watts on the A9s. The only difference really is the size of these tips. Um, as you can see the handle here, it holds it in just like that. It's a quick release handle, quick change handle. So as you can see in the 
corner here, I've got the new tip and the old tip. So the old tip, I can pull it right out, slide the two new tip in, and that was with it on at about 350 degrees Celsius. And it didn't, I didn't even have to touch it. No burns, nothing. Now you do have to keep in mind, these are the A9s. There is another model that's only like a 75 watt. I think it's like an A, A8 or something like that. That is not what you want because that is lower wattage than the A9s. The A9s are 120. And the biggest thing with that is the heat transfer and the fast, how fast it actually ramps up that heat. So with these, uh, right now it's at 150. I pull it out and it's at 350 already. It has hit its temp that fast and that will play a role into as well as the heat transfer onto the pad or whatever it is that you're soldering because whatever you're soldering is going to be a cold metal that you're touching that cold metal will pull the heat from the tip of the iron into that metal which will cool the iron down now the iron has to try and work its way back up and that will help to uh, melt the solder into the metal so the faster it can do that, the better. The more wattage, generally the faster it can. That's the tools. Now we're gonna move on to the actual soldering. So for the test I have here, three different strips that are of varying difficulty from easy to moderately difficult to downright a pain in the butt. And I'm gonna cover all three of them here. So the first one is our UCS this is the 2903, but it would be about the same for the 2904s. Both 8 mil and 12 mil uh, pads on the back are about the same size. So this should be about the same regardless of which UCS product that you get. All of our UCS strips have about the same size of pads on the back. The next thing that we're going to be testing is the SK6812 RGBW strip. This is the rigid strip, which is six millimeters wide. Now it is difficult because it is so narrow, just 12, the six millimeters wide means that the solder pads on the back are very close together. There's not a lot of room to work. So I will show you how to do this one as well. And last up on the block is our side emitting SK68s. And these are just so hard because we have 144 of these on a strip and there's really no room for solder pads so the pads are these little dots it is not a lot of room to work which means you do need to be a little bit cautious as to uh, when you're soldering what temps you're using and how long you are applying that soldering tip so let's go ahead and start with the easy one and we'll work our way up to the hard ones now obviously a very important factor on all of these strips is determining power ground data and determining the direction of flow you cannot solder against the flow of direction or it, it's not going to work it's not going to turn on it's not going to do anything so you must pay attention to the arrows and your inputs need to go following that arrow side so in a case of this one here we can see that the arrows are pointing this way which means our input is here and our output is on that side now i'm going to cut a fresh section for us to solder to and that's where I'll bust out my little wire dikes here. And I'm going to put it right in between the LEDs there. Same on the back side. And just cut just like that. It really is not bad. And it just snaps right off. Really clean cut. Really easy. It leaves enough solder pad for us to work on. That is something you do want to keep in mind. I mean, if you hold them at one heck of an angle, you might not have any solder pad left. So, you know, just be somewhat careful. The next thing we're going to do is take some of our solder and our soldering iron. Now, keeping your tip clean is pretty important. So that'd be a case where like, I'll go here and I got my little sponge there as well as the uh, copper ball there and clean that tip. Now I'm actually gonna switch back over to our broad tip for this one. And that's because I've got so much real estate, there's no real reason not to. So we're back over to the broad tip. Now I'm gonna do the same deal. I'm gonna clean that tip off, get it nice and clean. You did ideally wanna see the shiny part of the tip there rather than like something covered in solder. So now we're gonna go over here and apply some of that solder there. And it might take a second to get the pad hot enough that it takes the solder, but you shouldn't be on there for more than like two seconds. If you're on there for more than two seconds, you might wanna increase your heat, you check your soldering iron, um, 
something something's probably not quite right i run it 350 for soldering pads i run it about 450 when i'm soldering wires together so that's what i've done and i find that it works pretty well um, if you're using the same setup as me you should get the same results you strip those just like i just did and then you're going to want to tin those wires and basically what you're doing is instead of it being stranded wiring just bare we are adding a layer of solder to it and that will make it melt to the pcb that we have tinned so when you look here you see that we have tinned our solder pads on the led as well as the wires tips we have tinned as well now you want to cut those down to a little bit shorter about the size of the exposed solder pad that you're working with. You don't want to have a ton of bare wire that can potentially move around and touch itself and ground itself out or, you know, do something that would cause issues within the lights. Then I just go ahead and split them a little bit just like that. And I will go ahead and attach my ground first. Now, this is a case where like this strip just wants to roll up on me and it's mainly because this wire at the end but let's say okay that's an issue and i'm struggling with it that's where the solder mate m8 comes in handy here i can basically hold it down in place like that and then i can come back over here and attach my wires without any worry that it's going to move around on me because that little added weight holds it down pretty darn good and then just like that i remove it and there you go so, as you can see on the back side, it is on there, soldered, pretty simple, especially if you're using the thinner stuff. And this is what we send it with, too. So, like, on the other side, the, these little connections that we have on the strips, those are 20 gauge as well. 20 gauge is fine for, like, a half meter, meter run, something like that. It's not going to be an issue. Generally, I try to o go overkill and inject power as much as it makes sense. So as so generally the ends and the beginnings of every run. So if this was gonna be a strip and a light, I would inject power at the front end and I would inject power at the rear end. And that way you've got power going through the wires and both ends and meeting in the middle instead of power coming through this end and all of that power having to go through the strip to the end. And even worse, if you're going from one strip to another device like a, uh, a strip or a halo, you're having to run that all through there to that next device. You're just creating a lot of excess heat. And while this can take it, it is an unnecessary risk of a potential failure in the future. It's just a lot easier if you reduce that heat level of transfer that's happening by injecting power at multiple points within the light. Next up, we are going to go to the SK6812 RGBW. These are 5050s on a 6 mil wide PCB. It is a rigid PCB, but uh, only 6 mil wide, so I mean super small. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use my solder mate again. Grab our soldering iron, and I'm going to stick with the fat tip on this one because I can still work with it. Now, you can go to the thin tip, but the big thing to remember on tips is a bigger tip is a larger metal surface area, which means it will hold heat better and transfer it better to the pad. So you do have the benefit of a large tip and that it will heat the pad faster and transfer the solder faster. A smaller tip will take longer. So I'll go ahead and clean my tip off and we'll get another piece of wire ready to go. And... So we go, we have tinned it. It is ready to apply. Go ahead and clean my tip again. And now on these, you are gonna to wanna to make sure that you know which is which. On the UCS, there was enough room. We can mark on the back, positive, negative ground. You know what's what. Uh, not quite enough room on these, so we didn't do that. But you can see the ground and the positive is marked on the face of the strip. So I flip that over. I know power is up on top there. And just like that, I have got it soldered. Now I am going to visually check that. You want to make sure you don't have any strands of solder or anything like that connecting the pads together. 
and it can be as much as just a freaking super microscopic little strand that's connecting the two and that'll cause you some issues so you definitely want to check that and make sure but as you can see in this strip we have a solid connection there and the beads on the solder do look pretty good and that was because once again we had a little bit of solder on the pads on the pcb as well as a little bit of solder pre-tinned on the wiring and that just made it all flow together really well one thing to consider on this though is that as you're touching that tip to the rosin it's just it's burning off burning off burning off and eventually it's gonna be really hard to work with that solder because it's basically got no rosin at that point and it doesn't want to flow anymore the last one that we're going to use is this one now this one is tough this one is hard and one of the biggest things with this is that these little leds are so so stinking small if you get too much heat on these pads it will actually transfer to the led and it can actually make the led disconnect from the pcb which will cause tons of issues you do not want that so it's very important that you do not have heat on those pads for very long at all also very important because these pads are so small this is the kind of strip that if you're going to cut and extend or you're going to cut and solder things together you basically have to sacrifice one led and the way that we're going to do that is i am going to cut it right up to the point where our pads are all right there so i can easily get to them so that little led that i cut off that's garbage just trash throw it away once you get that done then you can go ahead and put that back into our solder mate here now i'm gonna keep this uh this tip here but i would recommend generally to step down to the narrow tip for this case but i'm gonna go ahead and try on the wild side here and see if i can get this to flow right And you can kind of tell when the when the solder melts because they'll just be kind of like sitting on top of that soldering iron and when it melts and it grabs to that pad it's like all that solder just drops and you'll see it and you'll be like all right i'm good uh there's a case for that i'm gonna go ahead and tin this wire up oh, and there you go like i said so i'll be getting a new one here my spring just snapped on me so there you go i've had it for i it's just over a year that i've had that exact set and that is the set that i use for everything so just accept that they're gonna break but they work so stinking well so there you go i have the wires done and tinned up and they're ready to go so now i'm going to go ahead and solder them into place i'm checking my soldering and it looks pretty darn good i think we're good to go so it's just that simple it's not too bad now i've been doing this for a while i've practiced a lot and it's been pretty good but if you follow these basic techniques practice a few times and just accept that yeah, you're probably gonna burn some stuff here and there and you know get a little too much heat on there burn your wiring and you're you know you can uh if you're really worried about it you can get silicone uh sleeved wiring now those come as individuals you can't really get them in like groups of three like this which i like the groups of three it's a little bit easier to work on uh but the silicone stuff will not burn from your soldering tip so if you're just having a hell of a time and it just keeps burning the plastic back uh from the soldering iron itself you can look into the silicone sleeved stuff um, but the plastic stuff works fine for me at least thanks for watching please like subscribe comment anything that you guys can do to help this get seen by more people is greatly appreciated till the next one thanks